My name's Matt Denton, this is Mantis Hacks, and in this video, I'm going to show you how I made this giant Lego Technic inspired clock. Most of the giant Lego projects I do are very time consuming and cost a lot of money because of the materials it takes. The latest project which is based on this uh, Lego go-kart, this is actually two and a half times scale, but the one I've just done is big enough for me to ride and it takes about 40 kilograms in material and hundreds and hundreds of hours to print. So I thought this is quite an accessible project for people who want to do something Lego Technic inspired and it's an iconic looking piece and also you end up with a functioning clock takes only about 400 grams of material, so it's fairly low cost and only a few hours to print. I've actually done several versions of this. Um, this was the first one I printed. The scale is 10 times scale, and for that you'll need a bed size of around 270 millimeters square. But I've also done a seven and a half times scale version, which will take a bed size of about 200 mil square. I catted up this part, this Lego Technic 24 tooth cog, of course, 24 tooth is very handy because we can make a 12 hour clock out of it very easily. And I've put in the back one of these quartz crystal replacement clock movements, which looks a bit like that. This one actually just hangs on a wall. It's got a little hanging point and it's got a flat back, so it hasn't got the rest of the cog on it, so it'll sit flat against the wall or it'll sit on a shelf. Obviously the bottom tooth there it just wants to rock over all the time one way or the other so I've actually modified the CAD file now. Also I noticed it was quite hard to tell the time when you just look at it because there's no markers on the face. So I've done versions in my CAD package with numbers on the face. I did all the numbers then I didn't like that so I just did the quadrants and then I thought I'll just put markers on the face. I've got my 7.5 time scale version. I put the markers on using the Lego Technic uh, axle. So you can put a Lego Technic axle into the hole because I thought you could decorate it with whatever you wanted to put on there by using actual Lego Technic parts. The Technic axle holes were kind of tricky to print right and they don't all fit very well. I think at the moment my favorite one is where you just have the quadrants marked out rather than all of the hours around the face of the clock. The number version's quite good. I haven't printed that one yet. I've cad it up, but uh, yeah, I've not printed that version. I think the first layer didn't go down very well on this one, which is why you should always watch your first layer when it's printing. I put a flat on the bottom of the cog there. So that last tooth is actually flattened off. So this one will sit nice and square on a shelf or a table. Another good version of this would be to have like a mantelpiece clock. So, I've counted these files up as well. So, a two by two plate and a one by two brick and then this one by two Lego Technic brick with the cross through the middle. And again, 7.5 times scale. I have printed a short Lego Technic axle that is gonna join all of this up. I haven't assembled this one yet, so I'm gonna do that now. But this back piece as well, which will go on here, which gives you nearly the full width of the cog. It's slightly different to what it should be, but the idea is that it's going to look right from side view as well. And then that axle is going to go through there into the back of the cog and then hold that in place. And it will sit on the front of that and that becomes a little mantelpiece clock. There's no support material needed, even though there's that big hole in the back there. And that's because I've added this center Kind of column here which is only needed basically because there's a little hole in the top for the clock. If I put that hole in then you're gonna to have to put lots of support material in here because it won't bridge whereas this is all bridging because of that center column and now I can just snap this out and that should print much easier much faster and be much easier to clean up because you're not going to end up having to pull out loads of support material. There is one other piece to print and that is uh, that little piece of uh, Technic axle there, which is to finish off the front of the cog to make it look like an axle goes all the way through. 
The quartz clock movement uh, I got off Amazon and there are lots of different variations of this. So I will put a link in the description as to which one you need um, because there's various spindle lengths, there's different types, some have metal fittings and I'm still kind of working through which one I like best to be honest. And they all come with slightly different hands and different lengths hands. And they're not particularly expensive, five to 10 pounds, something like that. But anyway, yeah, lots of variants. Let's start assembling this. Let's start by trying to take that support out in the middle there. If I've got this right, it should come out and just leave the hole down the center for the clock spindle to go through. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. That's perfect. I've got several different types of mechanism that I've looked at, and here's a few of them. It's all down to how long the spindle is through the clock and the type of attachment on them. These ones are push fit hands on them. You do get different hand types as well. There's some that come with this kind of just straight hand and some that are the more kind of classic, which I don't really like. These ones that push down, most of them do in fact, um, they just sort of push down onto the nylon shaft there, which is a little tricky because these are very delicate and they will bend. Um, the other good thing about these is you can cut them to length with a pair of scissors. I've got a slightly different version here. The hour hand pushes on to this type then the minute hand gets screwed on with a nut and then the second hand gets pushed down in the end there. But I will put a link in the description as to which one I end up using. fixing points here, a number six screw, which is what I'm going to be using. So I'm going to screw this onto the back and of course it can be unscrewed when you want to change the batteries. Well that's gone together easy enough. Looking at these colours again, I really like the red and grey together on my 10 times Glock here. The, the, the red, black and grey works really nicely here. But this red, well, it's not as nice as this one. And with the yellow, I don't know, there's something about those colours that don't go together. So I might actually use the black hands on this one instead. So I'm going to cut the minute hand to length first. And I want it to be about the same diameter as the clock. There we go. And there's a, like a plastic film over the hand. Without trying to bend the hand, just trying to put an even force. There we go, down onto the, the nylon our movement shaft so that's pushed all the way down there now and there's the minute hand on this should be pretty easy because it literally just drops onto there and then this little tiny knurled nut goes on the top and finally the second hand now the only thing i don't like about this particular one is that it comes with this second hand with this horrible little bit in the middle. Maybe it's more designed for this classic style of hands, which I don't really like. So maybe this one I'll do without a second hand. And you can just put this little cover on the top. Now, of course, you could come to decoration. I could keep messing around with that for hours. 
Uh, I think you get the idea, but I think that's where I'm sticking for now. This is a ticking movement rather than a sweeping movement. So that's another thing you need to look out for on Amazon. It depends on what kind of clock you want. I prefer the sweeping movements myself. Another interesting thing to do would be to uh, glue a cog to the second hand, which would be fine because it's uh, counterweighted evenly. And the second hand would rotate the cog and finish it off quite nicely, I think. Wall hanging version and a tabletop version uh, with decoration. Now, I quite like them both. I still really like this red, black and grey together. Um, I'm not sure about the red, but on this one, just because of the yellow bricks, but of course you can print different color bricks. It could be blue, red, yellow, gray, black, whatever you like. But I do have one other idea for this, to make the clock hands out of Lego Technic axles with these Technic uh, knuckle joiners here as the support arms. But it is a little tricky. The problem is that if I push this one onto here, which does fit really nicely, I could get the next one on by uh, gluing this knurled nut into the back of there and then screwing it onto the minute hand, but they won't pass each other. They're going to interfere with each other. I've got this longer mechanism here. This is a really long um, uh, spindle on this clock interface. So I'm going to try this uh, because these will also fit this one. I can put that that way around. And with this in place, it does kind of fit on there. So the best solution I've come up with so far is to glue one of these tiny little pins here into one of these knuckles. So then that gets glued in there, just gently scoring the inside edge of this. And what that does is just tighten the fit up on this here spindle. And it tightens it enough that it just bites that minute hand enough to turn the hour there. So that means that there's enough friction there that it's not going to slip. So now it's just down to whether there's enough torque in the movement to turn the hands. Both clocks are set at a quarter to nine and we'll see if this one is lagging by the time we get round to nine o'clock. And if it is, it's probably because these uh, hands are too heavy for the mechanism to lift them round towards nine there. Uh, I guess you could say only time will tell. I think that that's pretty much stayed in place. I think this one's slightly ahead, but I think I probably didn't set them perfectly. So that was probably my mistake, but it looks to me like there's plenty of torque in there in order to use real Lego Technic hands, which is kind of cool. That is the ultimate Lego Technic clock, surely. I'm still undecided about uh, how to decorate this clock or whether I like the decoration at all. And there's so many different options. Uh, maybe you can let me know what you think in the comments below. I've printed all of these parts with two bottom layers, three top layers, two perimeters and 10% infill. And the only one that needed support was this brick here. And it was the support inside of this cross shape in the back. It was a little tricky to get the support material out and it did need a little bit of cleanup afterwards but otherwise very simple to print. It's all printed in PLA, and in fact, I'm using Polymaker's PLA, as I always do with my prints. Probably about six to seven hours, maybe eight hours in total to print all of these parts. This one will fit on a 200 millimeter bed, 
For the 10 times scale, you will need a bed size that's as larger, uh, approaching a 270 millimeter square bed. If you want to build one of these, I'm going to put a link in the description to my 3ding.com account and you can support this channel by downloading the files and building one yourself. I'll also put a link in the description to the clock mechanisms that I use once I've figured out which one it is because I've got so many of these now, it's got kind of confusing for me too. Whoa, there. I have put a flat on the bottom of this one now, so that shouldn't happen. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed this video and don't forget there's plenty more giant Lego videos on my channel so take some time to check those out. Like, share, subscribe. Bye.